Assalamu alaikum everybody. Welcome to our next episode of Reasoned Analysis, Do Words Matter? I am once again joined by Shabir Yusuf to discuss this. So last time we discussed the word religion. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. So it's last right, time we, we discussed the word religion. Yes. And we went over the meaning, definition and history. Correct. The origin. Correct. So could we start by summarizing that? Please? Okay. Well, as we said in our previous episode, words do matter and how we actually approach the words is going to determine how our mindset is actually operating. So we were discussing the word religion and we defined the word religion as the belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or gods. We also established that the word religion may have had its origin from the word religar in Latin, meaning to bind. So progressively, we also established that the word religion seems to have been utilized as a catch-all word, where we have every belief system being included under this catch-all word. On that basis, if we were to consider it so, we will conclude whether you believe in one creator or a multiplicity of gods or even in Satan, you would have to logically arrive at the conclusion that every system, whether it is Sanatan Dharm with their 360 million gods, the Trinitarian formulation amongst uh, some Christians, that we would have to include the Satanists who may possibly be worshipping Satan. Now, if we were going to band all this together, we would have to logically include Islam in that catch-all word because that is how it is all being considered. Now, it would mean that Islam, Sanatan Dharm with the 360 million gods, the Trinitarian for formulation of the Christians, the Satanists and Islam would have to be included. All under the now, same umbrella. Exactly. Now what that actually does is that the mindset starts operating in that manner. That look, if Satanists are a religion, if Trinitarian Christianity is a religion, if Sanatan Dharm or Hinduism is a religion, well, Islam is also a religion. So basically, you're saying that then it just comes under as one other. Exactly. And, and so, accordingly, if, as an example, one of the writings in the other belief systems may have major issues, one logically would conclude that every other scripture also would have the same kind of issue. I would submit that that should not be the case and the word religion is foreign to Islam. If we think about it, it is totally illogical, irrational and unreasonable to ban every belief system under the one word religion. Okay. So can you illustrate why it's illogical and reasonable and yeah, rational? Yeah, not a problem at all. I, as we are covering just a few of them, if we look at uh, the Sanatan Dharma or Hinduism, mm -hmm. you will find in their writings you have gods battling and killing each other. Also in Sanatan Dharma, there's this idea of having a human or human parts combined with animal parts and you have what they consider to be the god Ganesh. So it's part human part. part human part oh, sort of elephant. Oh, yes yeah, oh. and I, I'm not saying this to demean or disrespect uh, the practitioners of the same. Likewise you find that they have got a monkey god Hanuman. So you find that in Sanatan Dharm you have got you've got aspects which when considered logically, rationally and reasonably, will give you an opposite conclusion, that they seem irrational, illogical and unreasonable. Likewise, you have got the Trinity in Christianity. This is an interesting one. 
You see, they have the formulation that there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, another of the Holy Spirit. But the Godhead of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one. The glory equal, the majesty co-eternal, the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Ghost is God. These three gods are not three gods, but one oh, God. It's enough to make your head hurt. <laughs> Respectfully, that is what it would seem, and it, would, it, it, it does sincerely come across as highly irrational. Uh, now, it's not only that. The odd thing is that this particular formulation comes from what is known as the Catholic Catechism. And there it actually says that although they say the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Ghost is God, they go, it goes on to say, but as we are compelled to say that these three gods are not three gods, but one God. So they actually use that word. The compelled. word compelled is used. Oh, okay. So it, it suggests to you that... Even they know it's illogical. Precisely. And in any case, you know, uh, I often, when I'm speaking to my Christian friends, I usually tell them, look, I'm going to undertake a simple exercise with you. If you accept the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as one, mm. I want you to think of all of the three at the same time. It's impossible. You, you have will to always do it simultaneously. have one. You, you, oh, yeah. you, simultane you can't do it. So, what usually happens is if they are equal, ask any of our Christian brethren who hold to this belief of the Trinity. If I were to ask them, okay, can I say in the name of the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit? They will say no. In the name of the Holy Spirit, the Son, and the Father? They will say no. They will always have this hierarchy, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm. But the so it's subconscious, the conscious, sorry, that there is a hierarchy, but they say there's three in one and they're all equal. But then when it comes to actually saying it, it doesn't operate like yes. that, okay? And in any case, uh, there is an example that our Christian brethren use. Uh, they have this uh, mathematical formulation. One times one times one equals one. Rather than one add one add one equals three. But even if you look at one times one times one equals one, I did ask a, a Christian uh, 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 who had uh, put this comment in, mm. and I responded by asking, can you please tell me, are those ones in the one times one times one all independent? Well, with the greatest respect uh, to that uh, particular commenter, I have not had a response back. And I don't expect a response because it does, and I, I mean this with the greatest of respect, it does come across, in fact, it is very logical. So now the issue arises back to what we were discussing. If the word religion is going to be used as a catch-all word and we as Muslims are going to accept that Islam also ought to be included, then we have to also conclude likewise that if there is a huge issue with some of the things that are found in these other belief systems, then one can also logically conclude that even Islam will have things like that. Mm. As I said, then you we subconsciously think of everything as being problematic. And we won't even bother to research any further. So I would submit to the viewers also that when in conversation, we must try and adopt what the Quran actually informs us about what Islam is. Now, it is very clear that when you consider things, yeah, especially if we go back slightly to the idea of a multiplicity of gods, yeah, uh, if you look at Christianity and the formulation of the Trinity, mm. yeah, you find also that in the Bible itself, in Deuteronomy 10, 17, in Joshua 22, 22, and Psalm 51, the idea is there about the God of gods and the Lord of lords. So a supreme God. Yeah, well, it, it is sort of... Uh, indicating the existence of other gods. Oh. If that's it says the God of gods, the yes, Lord of lords. That's what I'm saying, that you know what, that actually is indicating that at the top there is one supreme. But Actually, if you consider it like that, you will find that 
if you go to the scholars of Sanatan Dharma Hinduism, they will also inform you that all these 360 odd million may perhaps be only spirits, but there is one above, whether it's Brahm or Pramatma. There is one supreme being. So there are many issues. However, if Islam is telling us to consider Islam as a comprehensive, complete system, then that is what we should try and adopt in our language. Is there not one word that can catch that? There, there is an Arabic word. We use deen. Now, it is, when you think about it, it is talking about a very, very comprehensive system of life. And you know what? Logically speaking, if you think about it, you find that unless, if it is guidance from the creator, then logic would dictate that it would have to be a complete and comprehensive system. That encompasses because everything. That is what guidance would be. And that is what I would submit Islam is. And like I said to our uh, Muslim uh, brethren, we need to start adopting the language of the Quran. If the Quran is telling us that this is what it is, and for whatever reason, we start applying a word that is totally foreign to the Quran, somewhere along the line, you will find a bit of confusion arising. And the usage of words, and that is the very reason of these programs, words do matter. And uh, I would submit as a Muslim, if the Quran has stipulated an aspect of how we should consider it, then that is how we should start considering it and also informing other people of why it is to be used in that manner rather than just taking one word and flowing with it. Yes, so basically what you're saying is that words frame the way we think. Absolutely. So if we're using the wrong words that have the wrong meanings, then our thought processes are also going to be possibly wrong. Spot on. I mean, it is odd. If, if, if we were to start with something, and we employ the word, yeah, just like the example of the word religion, yeah? The belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or God's definition. Like I said before, if I were to ask a Muslim, okay, do you subscribe to this? Mm, they're going to say definitely not. There's no Muslim who will subscribe to this. In fact, if I were to, if I were to ask our Unitarian Christian brethren, would they accept this? They would also say no. Well, the issue arises that if we are not going to accept the very definition of the word, on what basis logically are we employing it in our daily lives? Maybe it's because um, they would argue it's the nearest word in meaning. Okay, I would probably agree with you but for the fact that if you have already been given the appropriate words to employ, on what basis do you want a replacement word? Because, remember this is from, is it Judeo-Christianity? From a Judeo-Christian perspective. Yes. But does that necessarily mean that that would be the appropriate one to use? No, of course, not, not for Islam, but now, we've adapted their words, haven't we? Obviously, because we, if you think in English, yeah. You're going to adapt the English words. Well, without being too controversial, I'm not going to start suggesting that we have a very colonized mind. But that is what it would come across as. As I said, we don't want to be too controversial. However, having said that, we do know that we must start employing the appropriate wording. And my submission would be that if the Quran has a particular word, then that is the word we should start employing and also explain the word in the best manner possible. So that, but there's no one English word that we can use, is there? There has to be a phrase then. I, I, I would suggest that there is, you can't have a direct uh, translation of a word. Mm. Because of the comprehensiveness of Islam, by definition, it would be a phrase that you would have to employ. Mm. And my submission is that a complete comprehensive system for the, guidance of hum of, uh, for the guidance of humanity 
is what is appropriate. That is what I would submit. Okay, yes, I agreed. Oh, I got a convert. How about that? Or a revert? <laughs> I don't know which. <laughs> yeah. So, so it it is very very important that the appropriate words are used. So right. So going on from that, the other word that's branded about a lot yes. that comes from this root word. Yeah. Is the word religious? Uh huh. And people use that again in everyday terminology. The word religious. Yes. So, if the word religion actually is, for a bit, want of a better word, faulty. Yes. When it comes to thinking about Islam. Yeah. What about the word religious? That is another good question. That is another word, which I would respectfully submit is totally alien to Islam. The word religious is basically associated with the word religion. Now, if we were to, and we have done, I would submit, we have done uh, uh, a, a lengthy discourse on it and established that the word religion really should not apply to Islam, then the word religious by default would have to be excluded also. You see, like I said a few minutes uh, earlier, if the Quran reflects a particular word that we should employ, that is the word we should try and employ. Now, we already said that the word religion can cause confusion. Mm. Re then the word religious also is going to cause confusion. So now, there's no word synonymous yeah. to religious in the Quran either, is there? No, no, there isn't. You see, again, there is, there, in the Arabic form, there are words like taqwa, that I would submit no way translates to religious. That, so, isn't that more God consciousness? Well, we can come to that, but it certainly is not the word religious. Now, not only that, but you find an odd thing here about using a particular word. You see, if you see somebody uh, in what I, I would consider to be traditional garb, they call it, yeah, mm. and there's this picture of this individual. He is considered to be very religious. If you look at the sadhu mm, among the yeah. uh, Sanatan Dharma followers, Hindus, mm. yeah, they are also considered very religious individuals. Now, I would suggest that, look, a person and their connection with the Creator would only be established by the Creator, not by the humans. But having, having right. said that, obviously, it is a stipulation. Yes for certain external criteria then for example the woman with the head scarf yeah then that is actually part of following the way no problem with that the distinction has to be made here what you are talking about is what is instructed and yeah. it is an objective instruction what we are talking about is somebody sat on the on mount uh, in the mount himalayas yeah who is busy in uh, meditation they are considered to be these individuals who are so close to god uh, to the creator rather that they become super religious now again the word religious is being applied to an individual who has a particular kind of god that does not necessarily mean that that particular individual is what they claim to be. Yeah? Cool, this is just a, we're looking at the outward. Yeah, this is just a simple example. I mean, it is something that can be overturned very easily. However, it does show that the word religious, because it is tied in with the word religion, again, is a word that really we should not employ. The Quran, again, tells us what we should call ourselves, Third parties may point fingers at you and say you are this, you are that, but that is how they want to view it. It doesn't necessarily mean you are or you are not. Having said that, you will find that a human being and his close connection to the Creator ultimately is going to only be the domain of the Creator to establish and not for human beings. However, there is a sinister element to this, which I, I'm just going to introduce for, uh, for completeness. You see, there are many unfortunate individuals who are being taken in by these individuals who claim 
to have this esoteric Next. knowledge or this connection to such an extent that they can give you children, they can give you X, Y, and Z. I'm highly critical of individuals like that, but that doesn't necessarily mean they aren't genuine individuals who genuinely want to assist. But you will find that very few and far between because they don't advertise their services. So there is also a sinister element. Like I said, uh, it's for completeness. I'm not trying to scare our viewers or anything like that. But there is where you will find nowadays you've got postcards coming through the door. Yeah, advertising their services. Have you got a problem in your love life? Have you got a problem in your jobs? Have you? And they are prepared for a fee to resolve. I, I tell you what, it just reminded me of an example I will give you. There was this lady, unfortunately, she had ma major problems. And she was told to go and see this. Uh, this is a word we are going to be tackling in uh, hopefully in the next uh, episodes. The word faith healer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was told about this faith healer in a particular location. And so she made an uh, appointment to go and see the person. The person convinced the lady that her problem can be resolved on the proviso that she pays for the tail of a crocodile from a specific river in Africa. Pays for the tail? Just the, you know, the tail of the crocodile, a tiny piece. What but it has to be from a specific river, not any river crocodile, a specific river in Africa. And she paid £1,000 for that. But what did she need to do with the tail? Well, he was going to create a portion for her. Oh. But he needed the tail first. So you find, now again, like I said, this is not, I'm not going to suggest that I'm using one word to ban all of them. They are genuine individuals. However, I'm just pointing out the fact that sometimes when we use a particular word, it denotes a particular way, the way that makes us think that, wait a minute, this person is very religious. He's highly thought of. Uh, so let's go with our problems to them. The word religious. It may just so happen that someone who is what we would consider to be a plain individual may be even closer in their connection with the creator than this individual who has all the necessary ingredients to be considered religious. Outwardly. Outwardly, of course. So I would submit that the word religion and the word religious are alien to Islam. And what we as Muslims should try and attempt to do is to re-engage with the Quran, the Quranic discourse, and start adopting the wording that the Quran has given us to try and clarify our own understandings and also clarify for the rest of the world. Agreed. I know you are looking stunned and confused again. <laughs> you don't stun me, dear. She's entitled to her opinion in this great country of ours. Okay, so it's Assalamu Alaikum from him. Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And it's Assalamu Alaikum from me. Till next time, inshallah.